In this bulletin, more developments expected in Kandavu. Dilip Katrin Dixon Sito honored at the Aeon Excellence Awards. And first group leaves for New Zealand Seasonal Workers Scheme. Good evening, I'm Akusi Tatale and this is FBC News. The people of Kandavu can expect more development in the coming months. Wati Soni Rekanroka joined Prime Minister Vorenge Bainmarama when he toured Kandavu Island earlier this week and compiled this report. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has assured the people of Kandavu that the Fiji First Government is here for all Fijians. We will not hinder the developments for the province of Kandavu. Banyamarama says a number of key infrastructure developments are already underway. Development of roads, bridges, installing solar systems to supply electricity for the villages, improve health facility and providing small business incentives for women in the village. The PM stressing the importance of education for students with the government telecenter opening up internet access at Wunisea Secondary School in 2014. Banyamarama also highlighted the government allocation of $10 million for indigenous Fijians covering the development of roads, water and electricity to improve livelihoods. What is on Rekandroka, FBC News. Nandi businessman Dilip Katri and long-serving hotelier Dixon Sito were honored at the Fiji Excellence in Tourism Awards last night in Denarau. Katri was given the Visionary Award while Sito received the Lifetime Achiever Award. Christopher Chan reports. A former Nandi mayor and the owner of Jacks of Fiji, Dilip Katri has long been associated with tourism through his expanding retail shops. As part of the Vision Group, they have invested in hotels like Hilton and Sone Sali. I'm totally surprised, didn't expect anything like this at all. Since the day I started, I was in retail tourism, now through Vision we are into hotels. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the future of this country. Sito is no stranger to the industry, but taking home the Lifetime Achiever Award was a wonderful surprise. It's, it's almost the pinnacle of uh, my career uh, to be given this kind of an award uh, and I thank the uh, my fellow trustees for considering me because I, I, there are many other deserving people as well. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama congratulated the winners and also emphasized the importance of the tourism industry. In terms of the overall health of the industry the total earnings from tourism increased from 1.31 billion in 2013, 2013 to 1.39 billion last year. This represents 33% of our gross domestic product, which means that one third of the Fijian economy is generated by tourism activity. It is also employing about 13% of the total workforce. Tourism remains our biggest export earner and we must do everything we can to not only maintain that contribution, but expand it. There were a total of 16 awards, including the Fijian Host of the Year and the Frontliner of the Year, granted to hardworking individuals and organizations who have ensured that our visitors' expectations are exceeded. In 2014, we had a total of 692,000 international visitor arrivals. We had almost 10,000 more visitors from Australia than in the previous year. 
for a grand total of 349,000. From New Zealand, our second biggest market, we had 15,000 visitors more than the previous year, a total of 124,000. Surprisingly, this year's Frontliner of the Year award was jointly won by Eunice Molia and Lingo Rees. The Fijian host was given to Chochi Vengaravi, and the Back of the House award was given to celebrity chef Lan Sito. Christopher Chand, FBC News. The first group of 12 seasonal workers to New Zealand departed the country today. They will be part of the seasonal worker scheme for the next seven months. In total, 30 people have been selected and the second batch are expected to depart the country later. Yesterday, the group had a pre-departure orientation training at the Sky Lodge Hotel in Nandi before being farewelled by the Minister for Labour, Chiochi Conrote. Well, hopefully, we can get the numbers increased, but then again, as I said, depending on how they perform. That is why you know, we put these people through a very stringent and robust um, uh, selection criteria. And now in the end, you know, they had to be physically fit because we don't want to send uh, some people down to New Zealand who will not be able to cope with the work because it's not going to be a picnic time there, I can assure people, uh, those who are going, that it's going to be hard work. These workers are part of the pilot program with New Zealand and will return to Fiji in September. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation opened its doors to members of the public today for its annual open day. Students, friends and families made their way down to the broadcasting house to get a sneak peek into what makes FBC tick. Alan Stoltz reports. Crowds slowly trickled into FBC as early as 8 a.m. this morning for the annual open day. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think this is the broadcasting house that actually does this annually and every year I have to say it gets bigger. So this is something that even the staff also looks forward to because we get to meet our listeners face to face. Tours were organized to take people around FBC to help them understand the processes and work that goes on into producing television and radio programs. For the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, having an open day is nothing new. It's an opportunity for members of the public to come in and meet their favorite radio and television personalities, as well as to find out what exactly happens behind those closed doors. There were many activities planned for visitors today. Some of these were face painting, treats to eat from stalls set up outside the building, and even a bouncy castle for the children. A lot of people use the open day as a chance to take snapshots with their favorite hosts on TV, like Chechemon's Andy Blake or movie talk host Clarence Das. The uh, TV uh, side of things uh, was uh, interesting. Um, it was the uh, first time for us to come in and have a look. Um, usually you see it on TV and um, you don't know what's happening behind it, but um, it was a good uh, tour, uh, very um, educational. Uh, visiting all the broadcasting rooms and you get to meet all the celebrities, the announcers. Who's your favorite? Um, all of my favorites. My favorite part of the tour was uh, I went into the... Um, uh, radio, six radio stations, Wayambula FM and uh, Mirch FM, likewise for Today FM, Gold FM, Radio Fiji 2 and Radio Fiji 1. And likewise for the, uh, where Jackie Spade always uh, read all the news and um, yeah, that's it. A special group visited FBC today, one that had members who were hearing impaired. This, however, didn't stop them from having a wonderful time. The deaf students from uh, all over Fiji, and uh, they live in the hostel for uh, education. And um, most of the students, they attend gospel school for the deaf. I think the best part was in the TV newsroom. Uh, they were so happy to see themselves through that uh, little screen and uh, to be proud that uh, at least they've been to the newsroom. Overall, the event was a complete success, with large crowds turning out and an impressive range of entertainment and activities for all ages. This success speaks volumes of what FBC has in store for the new year. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Coming up after the break, military officers to help eradicate American iguana in Taveuni. Mmm, Bollywood hero Panti Re.
मिर्ची मस्त मॉर्निंग मैं हूँ अश्विनी सिंह हाय मैं हूँ काजल शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे सिक्स ए एम टू नाइन ए एम मिर्ची एफ एम एट हाँ वेलकम बैक वी सी एफ बी सी न्यूज Students of St Augustine Primary School in Lambasa can now do research and broaden their knowledge with the opening of a new library. Thirteen thousand dollars has been spent to build the library, and is ex- and it is expected to improve the school's literacy level. Education Minister Dr Mahendra Reddy commended the school management team for their tremendous efforts in creating a knowledge-based society. The minister said societies now do not want their children to undergo and face the obstacles they did during their time. Hence, most communities are working together to build better schools with proper facilities. Absence of a library or equivalent institution from a society makes the society very dull and does not give the society the leverage to think. The growth and development of a society depends on the thinking people. The school was established in 1937. Enhancing service delivery is a key for the Ministry of Lands this year to cut back on waiting time. Minister Meriseni Vuniwanga says the new standard operating procedure outlined in the ministry's annual corporate plan calls for more efficient service delivery to the public and within the ministry itself. The new Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources is taking a personal approach to changing the laxity in service delivery to the public. Uh, Merce Nibuniwanga says there is much work to be done and certain issues need immediate attention. All of us sitting here would have heard, would have, have heard in the past negative, a lot of negative comments about this ministry. I have personally heard them too before I came into the ministry. Coming into the ministry has been a great experience so far for me. It's a ministry full of opportunities. It's a ministry full of potential. And I believe, personally believe, in the capacities of each individual here. Uniwanga says it is important that the ministry strengthens its network and works with other departments to achieve government's aims. We must accept changes. We must be versatile and adaptable to changing circumstances. We must put aside personal differences which serve as barriers towards teamwork and focus on what I personally hope is our one common aim. That is transparent and accountable service delivery. The ministry undertook an extensive exercise to come up with a guide to changing the delivery times for applications and procedures. This year, the ministry has pledged to be more open and transparent in its processes. Eleanor Turangiviu, FBC News. A group of soldiers are expected to be deployed to Ngamea Island in Vanua Levu in the next few days. The military personnel will be will join their counterparts, the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji, on the island to eradicate the invasive American iguana. Savera Tambua has more. Soldiers will be spending 14 days in Gamea to eradicate the species, since they pose an immediate threat to food security in villages and islands where they are present. They eat plants such as dalo leaves and cassava tops, belle tomatoes, cabbage, beans and yam vines. RFMF Land Force Commander Siti Beningilio says a review will be done after 14 days of operation. It is being conducted like a, uh, a military operation in terms of planning and execution. Uh, the, the iguana itself uh, is the enemy and all planning and preparations uh, for that is about destroying uh, that enemy. American iguanas grow to 1.5 meters in length, although a few specimens have grown more than 2 meters with body weight upward of 9.1 kg. 
Gilio says in some cases they may have to use shotguns. We are we're not carrying uh, the normal military high-powered weapons that, uh, that, uh, that is uh, associated with uh, the military. Uh, they're carrying 12 shotguns, uh, so, uh, which is uh, basically similar, the same as uh, what uh, farmers uh, use. Uh, so the, those are the, the only weapons. Uh, and will only be used as a last resort if uh, they can't get to the ones that might be uh, high up the trees or uh, scattering from the areas that they will be combing. The American iguana is not native to Fiji and was illegally introduced on the island of Ngamia in 2000. Since then, the pest has spread to Matangi and Tabiuni. There are heavy fines and penalties for anyone found to be in possession of any live stage of the American iguana. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Coming up on FBC Sports, France Bay Center in the frame for World Cup. And Pacific Games Council happy with facilities. दृष्टिकोण <laughs> महिती राते हर सो मासिल कर शुक्रवार तक रात सात से लेकर बारह के बीच रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धरकन पर रविन सिंह के साथ Leading our spots tonight, Vodafone flying Fijians coach John McKee is crossing his fingers in the hope that none of the players in the frame for rugby World Cup duties are injured. McKee singled out France-based centre Gabriel Lovambalavu as one player. He is keeping close tabs after making his return from a knee injury last year. Charlie Ndodakadaka reports. Gabriel Lovambalavu has earned 16 caps for the Vodafone Flying Fijians. His last international appearance was in the 2011 World Cup. The 29-year-old is making a return to action this season after recovering from a knee injury which sidelined him from the top 14 competition in France last year. Yeah, there's been some who have been injured. Uh, Gabby is um, at, at, at Bayonne. He's just, just come back onto the scene. He was in great form last year. Unfortunately, he had a knee injury which kept him out for quite a, quite a long time. He's, he's now back playing, so I'll be keeping a close eye on, on his form. Lovon Balabu will have to compete with the likes of Verni Kingoneva, Nemani Nandolo and Aiseli Tikorotuma for the midfield position. And McKee is leaving it up to the former Suva centre to prove his worth. I think you know, the inside centre spot is, is, is quite open and, and you know, with, with good form he can come back into the frame there. Lovon Balavu's experience of having featured in two successive World Cups in 2007 and 2011 makes him a front runner. Yet like all good coaches, McKee will only select players on form. Talento Dakadak, FBC Sports. The contest for sports in the Vodafone Fiji 7 side is becoming increasingly hard for coach Ben Ryan. The soft-spoken mentor says it will be hard to exclude any of the 12 players that successfully wrested the Las Vegas 7's title in the United States last weekend. Everyone else is going well and improving, you know. We've got our mainstays um, like Oscar and Jerry and Semi that are, and Save that's playing well. I thought Samasoni came in and did a great job. But really, all of the boys, you know, from Manu and Sitaveni and Ice and everyone, really, and, and Jasa, they, they all played well and they contributed. And what you don't see on the cameras and in the tournaments is what, how they are off the field. Um, they've got a good mentality now. They're very competitive in training. Um, they're doing most of it with a smile on their face and they're working hard. The next assignment for Ryan and his men will be the Hong Kong Sevens to be held on March 27th to the 29th. Pacific Games Council President Vidya Lakan is back in the country after a two-week trip to Papua New Guinea to inspect the progress of the Games facilities. Lakan says there is no reason to believe that Port Moresby will not be ready to host the regional competition in July. Chalenda Utakadaka has more. So it's, certainly... it's a race against time for the Pacific Games Council in making sure the facilities are ready come the 4th of July. 
Council President Vidya Lakan was part of the entourage that visited the sites in Port Mosby and is happy so far with the progress made. You know, preparations for the games as far as the games organizing committee is concerned is spot on. They're on the ball, so that side of uh, our preparations we don't have uh, any issues with. Uh, the only concern has been so far uh, in the uh, readiness for the of the venues, the actual sporting venues, because there was, as you would know, a uh, considerable uh, delay in, in uh, getting them ready. Many critics have raised their concerns about the delays in the construction, but Lakan is confident that the facilities will be completed on time. Now they might not be completely uh, ready, but they'll be ready to such, such an extent where we can host a reasonable uh, Pacific Games uh, competition. The 2015 Pacific Games will be held in Port Mosby from July 4th to the 18th. Talent of the Kavak, FVC Sports. The Fiji Pearls netball side lost its second to a match against the Waikato Bay of Plenty 75-39 in Christchurch this afternoon. The Kate Carpenter coach side got off to a good start, having trailed the Kiwis 18-11 in the first quarter. The Magic started to pile on the points for a 40-18 lead at halftime. In the third quarter, the Kiwis led at 55-32. The two sides earlier met on Thursday with the Magic beating the Pearls by 77-54. Ba and Suva have played to a nil-all draw at Govin Park in the Galaxy Premier League. Both teams had ample chances to score a goal but lacked the finishing touch. Good one. Suva bring it back though. Across field. In the way. Missed time there. By Yamba. In comes Ravinesh Karan. And Epeli Zondro having to dive to his uh, left. Now Akula turning infield, finds Mavilako Nakama, Nakama on for Malakai Rakula. Rakula turns and uh, his shot just away to the uh, left hand side if you're looking on the screen. In the other league match today, Lambasa defeated Nandronga 1-0 at Subrail Park, courtesy of an Apisalome Turuva goal. Tomorrow, Lotoka takes on Nandi and Rewa faces Tailebu Siri. The West Indies handed Pakistan their second loss in the Cricket World Cup after beating them by 150 runs in the Group B match today. Dinesh, Ramdin and Landel Simmons hit half centuries as the West Indies smashed 115 runs in the final 10 overs to post a challenging 310 for 6. The West Indies were let off the hook with some poor fielding and as many as 4 dropped catches. The Caribbeans moved into second spot in Pool B behind India, while Pakistan sits at the bottom and have yet to register a point. Today's weather, afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms affected most parts of the country. Temperatures continue to swing in the hot 30s with a high of 33 degrees recorded in Suva, Ba and Lombasa with other centers posting a 32. Tomorrow expect more of the same fine weather with bouts of showers and possible thunderstorms. Further outlook, occasional showers over most places, northerly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas, moderate to southerly swells. For mariners, a strong wind warning remains in force for the southern low waters, southern Coral Sea and the Kandavu Passage. Recapping our headlines tonight, more developments expected in Kandavu, Dilip Katri and Dixon Tito honoured at the Aeon Excellence Awards and first group leaves for New Zealand Seasonal Workers Scheme. To, to our poll segment this week, we ask, are there enough public conveniences? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenscience at fbc.com.fj or share with us our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News for tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow. Bye for now.